Last series, Super Size vs Super Skinny took eight overweight and underweight people and swapped their diets. For the first time in their lives, they were forced to address their dangerous eating habits. That looks disgusting. It was a radical change, but provided remarkable results. You're 24 stone 10. You've lost nearly two stone. On tonight's show, we take a trip down memory lane and revisit two of our former food swaps, Tatiana and Sandra and Yasmin and Daryl. One year on, we've brought back our biggest success stories who've undergone massive changes in order to get their lives back on track. And I can't believe how much weight you've lost. That's fantastic. We'll also look back at how journalist Anna Richardson tried and tested a series of weird weight loss solutions in order to battle her bulge. Each cookie is a delicious meal. No, it's not. It's a biscuit. This is Super Size versus Super Skinny. One year on. Here's our first super skinny, tiny Tatiana Moxie. She's checking into our clinic in the hope of piling on some pounds. I'm not very happy with the way that I am at the moment, so I think it'd be better to look a bit healthier and have a bit more weight on me. Before she embarks on the swap, she undergoes a thorough medical with Dr Jesson. 22 inches. It's time to work out the size of her problem. So you are 93 pounds, OK? okay. Tatiana weighs in at six stone nine, which is at least one and a half stone underweight. I make your BMI to be 15. If I tell you that a normal body mass is between about 20 and 25, you can see that you're actually quite a lot below where you should be. 19-year-old customer services worker Tatiana is a serial under-eater with the equivalent daily diet of a four-year-old. I think I've always been slim. I've never been probably over seven. Stone. On a typical day, I'd probably have a cereal bar or toast for breakfast. I would probably just have a jacket potato with tuna at lunchtime with salad. But her eyes are bigger than her belly and she rarely finishes a meal. Some people have made comments that have been upsetting for Tatiana to hear. The reason that I want to do this is just because I don't like people like touching me, putting their hands around my wrists and saying, oh, you need to put on weight because you're too skinny, you don't eat enough, because they don't really know me and it, it does upset me a lot. So I think people would stop doing that if they saw that I, I did have a little bit more weight on me. A shock tactic is on its way. 40-year-old larger-than-life Sandra Andrew has just five days to teach Tatiana the joy of food. The people that I find that are too slim, I don't know, they kind of remind me of lollipops, you know, with the big head and the sort of little tiny body. And by sizing down to Tatiana's child-sized diet for a few days, Sandra will tackle her own weight problem once and for all. Sandra is an internet seller, and her home-based lifestyle is hindering any chance of a healthy eating plan. She spends most nights gorging on takeaways and fatty snacks. I don't really have breakfast, lunch, dinner in that sort of traditional sense. Sometimes I might sort of eat five, six times. These two are polar opposites when it comes to extreme eating, and it shows. Sandra's thigh is seven inches bigger than Tatiana's waist. With a 17 stone weight difference, they will teach each other a hard lesson in food and nutrition. By swapping their diets, they will shock each other into addressing their problems and changing their dangerous habits. How do you think you're going to get on with your super skinny housemate? It depends on whether or not she objects to, you know, trying my diet, which uh, maybe she will. Do you think she'll manage it? No. It's now time for Super Size to meet Super Skinny. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, I'm Sandra. I'm Tatiana. Hi, Tatiana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> what do you normally eat, like, in a day? Um, well, sort of... Oh, my God! <laughs> my plate's bigger than your whole tummy! I don't know how you're going to fit it in! Oh, my God, how much is she actually going to eat? And I'm going to have to eat everything that she eats. Oh! 
perhaps she'll, she'll help me through it and I'll have to help her because she'll be starving. I don't think it's going to work. Sandra is going to try and add fat to Tat by handing over her food for a few days. But first, Dr Jessen has to show them the error of their ways by demonstrating what a week's worth of their food looks like. Well, I'm going to show you now exactly how much you get through. Starting with a week's worth of Tatiana's breakfast. More toast. Anything else? Oh, you have a little bit of cereal and a lot of tea. And that's it for an entire week. Let's go on to lunch, then. A sandwich, some potatoes. This is a week's worth of lunches. No afternoon snack. Mmm, I don't know what that is. Oh, that's your soup. This is a week of food for you that's supposed to keep you going. How do you survive? I don't know. Off well. Do you think now you can see that perhaps you're not actually eating yeah. enough and when you think you're full, you haven't actually taken enough food in? A woman's recommended daily amount is 2,000 calories. Tatiana is consuming just 1,400 a day, so is under-eating by 4,200 calories, or at least two days' worth of food every week. She's lacking vital nutrients that will soon be replenished when she swaps to Sandra's supersized diet. Right, let's go on to lunch. Meatballs, more rice. I think we're getting into a bit of snacking now. Chips, fish fingers, fish fingers, fish fingers. Fried eggs, fried eggs, more fish fingers. Burgers, great. More of your curries coming in. Lots more white bread. Can you see now where you're going wrong? Sandra is clocking up 3,700 calories a day, which is a staggering overeat of 11,900 calories or six days' worth of food every week. Still to come, we meet our second swap, Fussy Eater Yasmin and Man Mountain Daryl. Anna Richardson's dieting quest pushes her under. How old are you? About nine. And our four feeding partners are back one year later to reveal the secret behind their brand new bodies. What about this one, eh? Your shirt's like yeah. hanging off you. Tiny Tatiana is eating the equivalent of a four-year-old's diet and weighing in at just six stone nine, she's at least one and a half stone underweight. With her body at risk from serious damage, she's booked into our feeding clinic in the hope that swapping diets with Sandra for a few days will kickstart some serious weight gain. It's the first day of the swap. All right, breakfast. What am I having? <laughs> Um, you're going to hate me so much, but um, you're actually just having a cereal bowl. A cereal What? You are so joking me. I can't believe I've got to eat that for breakfast. I think I'd rather this than a cereal bar. Sandra faces a breakfast behind bars. Where's the rest of it, like? But Tatiana is in no hurry to finish her curry. It's quite disgusting, actually. <laughs> I can't believe you eat this for breakfast. At lunchtime, Tat is faced with a white bread buttered sandwich stuffed with full fat brie. Oh. Followed by an afternoon of snacking through roast chicken. I think after I've had a couple more bites of this, I probably won't be able to eat anymore. Sandra's diet is excessive, but it's helping Tatiana to discover new foods, and this will enable her to enjoy a much healthier and more varied diet in the future. Sandra is struggling with the swap, and as she works from home, she's used to staying up late and eating through the night. Tonight, she faces her first evening without a midnight feast. It is difficult, cos I feel like I've got no, I've not had nothing warm. I don't know, I was saying to someone the other day that when I have something warm, I feel like I'm getting, like, hugged from inside. On day two, Sandra serves up another lunchtime speciality. West Indian rice with pork in onion gravy. Oh, and a smidgen of salad. But Tatiana's Italian job fails to impress her supersized housemate. The pasta makes me hungry. After about an hour, I'm going to be starving. <laughs> a good tip for both super skinnies and super sizers is to use a slightly smaller than average dinner plate. That way, super sizers are less inclined to feel cheated and super skinnies won't feel so overwhelmed. I like the rice. It's quite easy to eat. The pork is filling me up quite a yeah, lot. Yeah, 
because it is quite a big chunk. Tatiana isn't used to leaving a clean plate and fights to finish her feast. Dr Jessen wants to show Tatiana why it's important for her to supersize her suppers. He's hoping this criminal lineup will make her face up to what her diet's doing to her body. What do you think of these pictures? The pale lines on her hands indicate a lack of iron and possible anemia. Women who undereat, their periods often stop completely, and it's a sort of attempt for your body to preserve whatever nutrients and iron it can. Then that'll affect your fertility. If you're underweight and your body fat drops below 13%, you risk your period stopping. Dark circles under the eyes are the early warning signs of chronic fatigue. And the other thing that we can't actually see here, but it will happen, is that you'll start to get really bad wrinkles and dry skin and yeah. thinning hair because of all that lack of nutrients. Being underweight can lead to brittle hair that breaks easily and even falls out. I completely agree with what you're saying. I mean, I can't really... There's not really much I can say about that. So. What can we do about it, then? One simple thing. Make me eat more. <laughs> Make you eat more and eat properly. <laughs> and all of these things, everything that I've talked about here, will correct itself. Last series, I embarked on an eight-week fad diet frenzy in a bid to drop a dress size. If it was a wacky weight loss solution, I tried it. I'm a maple syrup virgin. I'm going to remind you all of what worked and what was quite frankly ridiculous. Halfway through my quest and half a stone down. But so far I've failed to find a cure for my curvaceous figure and none of them stopped me wanting to pig out on my favourite foods. Go on. I know you do. Next on my to-do list was not really a diet, but a state of mind. I took my mission to a higher plane with hypnosis. Hypnosis, schmipmosis, I mean, come on. I mean, some people think it's great, but I reckon it's, it's probably a load of old baloney. OK, so I'm a bit sceptical, but it's apparently what caused Lily Allen to drop two dress sizes. And you can't deny, she does look great. Leading hypnotherapist Marissa Peer has agreed to help me lose weight. Fat chance, but here goes. As I count backwards, you're going to see your feet, hear your feet, feel your feet, treading each step. So right now, you're looking down, 10 steps. How old are you? About nine. Just describe what's going on. It's Sunday lunch, and it's very stressful and it has to be a family lunch, and it has to be a roast dinner, and therefore we have to eat everything. You have to eat everything to eat because of your dad. Everything to eat so everything. Mind you, so just take this hand and just squeeze it into a fist. And this is how big your stomach is, and now every time you're eating, you can literally feel your stomach contracting. And for you, saying no to excessive amounts of food is saying yes to being the weight and the shape and the size you want to be. And food can never, ever be an issue again. Food can never control you. How do you feel? <laughs> like I've been asleep for about a million years. It's so peculiar. You really do kind of go into this trance-like state. It's almost like, if you've never been hypnotised, it's almost like just that period of time just before you wake up and you're kind of aware of what's going on and you feel incredibly relaxed. You know, it's a really nice state to be in. I don't know how this is happening, but the following morning, instead of my Carb City breakfast, toast, crumpets, lashings of butter and jam, I'm content just to eat some fruit. What did she do to my brain? I'm slightly worried about where old Porker Richardson has gone. She, who could literally do an eat-all-you-like buffet, no problem at all, suddenly not interested, really, in all that old, fatty, greasy, carby food that I used to love. I'm kind of um, really content just to eat really small amounts and, and quite healthy stuff. I'm worried that I'll still go weak at the knees at the sight of a bowl of crisps or a packet of biscuits. So Marissa has some visual devices Nana, to put me off those see. foods for good. So, a little exercise in fat burning. You know, we all delude ourselves that crisps are just potatoes cooked in natural oil. 
but they are in fact solidified fat. And when you set fire to a crisp, you're gonna see how slowly that burns. Imagine how hard your body has to work to burn off that fat. And you can get a teaspoon of fat from this crisp. Smell that? That smells fishy. Put your finger and thumb together for me like that. And when I pull them apart, I want you to resist. So as I pull, you push. So just keep resisting me. So you can see you're very strong. Take that and put your finger and thumb together for me and resist me. See how weak you are. Just, I mean, that's just like pulling all pieces of paper apart. It's so simple. You can't, I can't even resist. It's bizarre. OK. Put your finger and thumb together and resist me. Can you see the difference? Because you're holding a proper food, a real food. Following my sessions of hypnosis, I'm as keen as a chocoholic in a chocolate shop to find out if this latest therapy has shifted any weight. Here goes. <sighs> OK. Oh, wow. Just through the power of my brilliant mind, I've lost three pounds. That's fantastic. That's the most I've lost on any of these diets. 10 stone, 11. Brilliant. Well, hypnosis proved me wrong and provided the best results of them all. But I still had a few more ideas up my sleeve and next on my list was a diet rumoured to help Beyonce lose two stone in two weeks. It seems to be water, maple syrup and cayenne pepper. And that's all she drank for two weeks. I had to drink that concoction for a week and I wasn't allowed to eat anything. Apparently the syrup was crucial for energy and the pepper was supposed to speed up my metabolism by 15%. I actually feel a bit sick. It is a revolting. After five days, I'd only lost two pounds and I couldn't take any more of the vile liquid. Goodbye. So, onwards and upwards. Join me later to see what diet discoveries I made when I hit the city that never sleeps, New York. On to our second swap, and another one of our super skinnies is fussy, fatty dieter Yasmin Smith. Her dangerously restricted eating habits have turned her into a bag of bones. I just feel like I look too thin. I look in the mirror and I just, I just see bones. It's time for Dr. Jessen to weigh up the size of her problem. OK, climb up on the scale. Let's see exactly what you are today. 109. That's just 7 stone 11 pounds. And with a BMI of only 17, she's nearly a stone and a half underweight. Yasmin was diagnosed with a lactose intolerance three years ago and as a result is so fussy about what she eats that nearly every type of food is off the menu. Um, I've been on a lactose-free, wheat-free, preservative-free, additive-free, everything-free diet for the last years. As well as dairy foods like milk, cheese and yoghurt, anything with wheat in it like bread and pasta is a complete no-no. She also won't touch anything processed or packaged which just leaves her to fill up on fruit and salad. End result? She's completely undernourished. Fruit and vegetables are vital in providing you with essential vitamins and minerals. But you can get too much of a good thing, as they should only make up a third of your overall diet. In order to have a healthy, well-balanced diet, you need to eat from the five major food groups. Starchy food like bread, pasta and cereal, fruit and vegetables, meat and fish, milk and dairy products, fat and sugar. Like Yasmin, if you limit your diet to only one or two food groups, you're seriously restricting your nutritional intake. Yasmin's diet is so extreme that even her son Matthew is starting to worry. It's very, very, very bony. We still don't have any fat on her. He needs to eat steak fat. Yasmin is going to have to take drastic action, but luckily help is just around the corner in the form of Derbyshire diet dodger, Daryl Watson. Daryl has a diet with one golden rule. Basically, if I want something, I'll have it. In between meals, he also demolishes sack loads of snacks. I was 23 when I met my wife. I was around 18, 18 and a half stone. And I don't know, through contentment and being happy or whatever, started to put it on. Daryl's weight has provoked comments that are hard for his wife Tracy to stomach. 
went swimming and people were pointing at him and you could see lip read. How on earth can somebody get into that state? Daryl didn't see, so I didn't say anything. But that hurt me. These two have got totally different views on eating. At 66 inches, Daryl's waist is almost three times wider than Yasmin's tiny 24. How do you feel about your weight now? I find it hard to do what I was doing before. Lumping 33 stone, that's not an easy job. Lugging around only a fraction of that weight, super skinny Yasmin can't understand why people let themselves pile on the pounds. If I saw somebody that was really obese, I'd think, God, do you know what you're doing to yourself? Do you know what you're putting in your body? It's time for Yasmin to come face to face with her fears. Yasmin, Daryl, come and meet each other. Daryl weighs 33 stone. Yeah. Daryl, this is Yasmin. Okay. She weighs seven and a half stone. Right. This means that we could fit four of her into you. Christian is going to give them both a taster of what's in store for the next five days by showing them what a week's worth of their food looks like, starting with Yasmin's breakfast. Rice cakes. Fruit, strawberries, nothing wrong with that. Right. Lunch, some yeah, chicken, chicken eggs, some avocados. This is all good, healthy stuff. I can't complain. What's this coming through? Smoothies. Smoothies. And then we go to dinner, yeah? Chicken, I think. Chicken, chicken breasts? Yeah. Rice pasta. What else have we got? That's a lot. Not much. It's not a lot, is it? Yasmin is only getting through around 1,300 calories a day. She's missing out on around two and a half days' worth of food each week. So, Daryl, what are these sandwiches here that you have? Cheese, ham. Oh, this uh, is breakfast food as well. Or toasties. Crisps, fried food, saturated fat, more sandwiches, burgers. What's that? A roast chicken, pizzas. More pizzas. Probably about half of this is made up of fat, OK? Daryl is consuming 6,200 calories a day and is overeating by a shocking 10 days' worth of food every week. Day one of the diet swap, and Yasmin is presented with her first big food challenge, Daryl's usual fatty fry-up. He won't be dancing when he sees what Yasmin has to offer. <laughs> Great English breakfast. Oh it is great, actually, minus that and that. It's fine. <laughs> Snackaholic Daryl gets a relishing plate of rice cakes. Rice? Yeah. OK. Good I'll time. give it a go. It's not going to catch on in the morning at home. <laughs> but it's Yasmin who's really struggling. Daryl's favourite, fried black pudding, is really making her stomach turn. It's not the taste, it's the idea of what's in my mouth. <laughs> There's more disappointment for Daryl at dinner time. While he cooks up his favourite dinner, roast chicken with all the trimmings, Yasmin prepares him a low-fat chicken and avocado salad. No, it's tempting, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not keen on that. What, the avocado? No. Um, really? Is it because it's squishy, the texture? Yeah, it's... Well, I don't know. Taste of it as well. Yasmin is finding her roast really hard work. Definitely, definitely having an effect, um, the stuffing with wheat in it, because I can kind of feel my stomach bubbling and I'm beginning to feel a bit... Sicky. <laughs> and the more she eats, the worse it gets. You look at my hands, I'm actually shaking. But I was fine until like a couple of minutes ago. I just felt really sick. Yasmin may think this is a challenge, but it's only the beginning. Still to come, Anna Richardson pulls out all the stops and goes to New York for the final instalment of her dieting mission. And we'll reunite our two swaps a year down the line to see if their big diet changes have made a massive difference. OK, guys, moment of truth. One year ago, we met super skinnies Tatiana and Yasmin and super-sized Daryl and Sandra. They've been following Dr Jessen's healthy eating plan in a bid to address their weight problems and improve their health. Later in the show, we'll meet them a year on to see what impact their 12-month diet plans have had on their lives. Super skinny Tatiana is broadening her tastes on the diet swap. The 19-year-old grew up in Portugal, 
and turns her nose up at any food that isn't homemade. I don't know, I think I eat a lot more food when I'm in Portugal because yeah. I prefer the food and mm, I prefer really the type of food, yeah. Unlike Tatiana, Sandra's family life has always revolved around meals and food-filled occasions. This is Mum's kitchen. <laughs> As you can see, there's a lot of uh, food Christmas? on Christmas Day. Loads of people come round. That's just a traditional thing. But Sandra's eating was not always a happy event. Losing her baby son four years ago saw Sandra turn to food for comfort. I just couldn't sleep. I couldn't. I was just like so down. I couldn't really do anything really. It stopped to stop living. Mm. And I think it even got to a point where I didn't even care if I put weight on. I didn't even care. I just didn't really think that overweight people would have a reason for it. That it, I just thought it just sort of like came on because they started to eat more. But there was obviously a reason for it. Sandra is breaking through Tat's fat assumptions and changing her own attitudes to food too. The constant meal bombardment finally triggers Tatiana's appetite into action. Yeah, the first time in the last two days I've actually wanted to eat. Wow. Tatiana has finally discovered a love of food that will help give her body the nutrients it desperately needs. It's cheesy cold water. Well. Mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> But another night of Sandra's after-hours eating lies ahead, starting at 8 with leftover rice and a pork chop. Next, an 11pm nibble of chocolate bars with a cup of tea and a Sandra-sized snack of two pork sausages in a generously buttered baguette rounds things off at 1 o'clock in the morning. Sandra's so-called snacks are actually the size of most people's whole meals. And I hope that by seeing Tatiana struggling through these, it'll make her realise just how much food she's getting through every day. Tatiana gets stuck into her snacking, but Sandra is really suffering. God, this is like torture. I'm not finding it that pleasurable either, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah. How can I make this bit of orange in the bottom stretch? <laughs> I'm learning that uh, even if you do have to wait, you know, six hours for your food, you're not going to collapse. Your body can cope with it. But the next morning, Sandra's stomach is rumbling and she reaches breaking point with Tatiana's tiny portions. <laughs> It's the last supper, and Tat is served some of Sandra's Caribbean home cooking. But Tat's offering of soup without bread is looking embarrassingly measly. And you're having, oh my God, you're having like, you know, my mum's speciality, rice and peas with beef stew. And I'm having soup. I think I'll get more nourishment from my, from my cherry, cherry flavored lipstick. The wonderful thing about our bodies is that we all work in the same way. We all require the same nutrients to function properly, just in different amounts. Here are five tips for a healthy diet that will suit us all. Always eat breakfast. It'll stop you snacking on sugary or fatty foods mid-morning. Plan your meal times and your shopping in advance so you don't run out of essentials. Have a small light snack in between meals, ideally a piece of fruit. Never let yourself get ravenously hungry. Just aim to feel peckish. And finally, the golden rule. Always leave the table feeling like you could have eaten a little bit more. Back to our second swap. Super-sized Daryl and super-skinny Yasmin are halfway through their regime. Dr Christian joins them for dinner as he wants to get to the bottom of Yasmin's self-diagnosed intolerances. Yasmin, how are you feeling about eating that? Mm. Fish cakes I'm not sure about because I don't normally eat fish. Why don't you normally eat fish? Um, it tends to uh, make me feel sick and gives me a migraine. I really believe that you have not been eating things in a way misguidedly. I think you can eat more than you are eating. Yeah. And I think your intolerances are a way of eating less. The next day, Daryl pushes Yasmin to the absolute limit with a seafood pizza that is guaranteed to get her stomach in a spin. And can I ask? I know the prawns, and I know that's chicken, I think. What's that? Cockles. <laughs> do they come out in little shells, or...? They do, don't they? They come out of a jar for me. 
How much do you think you're going to eat of it? I'll keep going till I feel like I'm going to throw up. I'll go and get the bucket. I can't eat anymore. Come on, you can do it. Despite the fact it is wheat-based and covered in seafood, Yasmin soldiers on and is determined to conquer her food phobias, one mouthful at a time. So, seven weeks into my mission to slim down and six crazy weight loss regimes later, and the scales revealed... I'm 10 stone 9, which is good. OK, I mean, I've lost 12 pounds. I've lost nearly a stone, but it's week 8. I would have expected more than that. So something drastic needed to happen. OK. I've exhausted every diet possibility in the UK, so there's only one place for it where they take dieting really, really seriously. <laughs> Almost every crazy diet, fad and exercise regime that's big in the UK started out in the US. The Americans are food and diet obsessed. So I'm on a New York mission to find out exactly what they do over here to shift those pounds. This city is mad. Everywhere you turn, there's food and there's loads of it. And there's also advertising for every diet known to man, from the bizarre to the blooming ridiculous. Get this, love this. The Hollywood cookie diet, secret of the stars, and on the side it says, each cookie is a delicious meal. No, it's not. It's a biscuit. Americans have a counsellor for everything. Marriage, sex, life, and yes, you've guessed it, you can now even get one for your diet. I'm hooking up with food coach Jackie Storm to help keep me from caving into all the food temptations New York has to offer. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Hi, now. Listen, yes. I have heard on the grapevine that the latest thing in New York is to have a food coach. What's that all about? It's about figuring out what to eat, what's good to eat, how many calories does a person need. Because I have to tell you, I am sorely tempted by the muffins, by those cheesecakes, by the bagels. Oh, I really want to eat them. If I was struggling with that, could I, could I call you and, and get you to sure. sort of stop me? Absolutely. And what would you say? Just knowing that you're going to be checking in with me, just knowing that I'm going to be looking over your shoulder, you are going to be self-conscious. It's like having my mum at the end of the phone, Jackie, telling me off. <laughs> Having got a food coach on board to keep me from temptation, I'm now heading to another part of town to hook up with New York lifestyle journalist Alyssa Shalaski. She's going to fill me in on the latest weight loss diets at a special type of restaurant where absolutely nothing gets cooked. So what is the latest fad? We're really into the raw food diet and, and the people who follow the diet are called rawists. So there's... Rawists? Rawists. Gwyneth Paltrow was the first person to sort of come out and say, I am a uh, rawist. Or, um, of course. Of course. I mean, I'm from London, so this just looks to me like I've got a plate of salad. What's going on? Well, it's stuffed endive. The difference here is that the, the cheese is not made with dairy. It's uh, cashew nuts that is blended with lemon and salt. And uh, that's pasta, I take it? Yes, the noodles are uh, yellow squash that's turned out with a, a spiraling uh, slicer. Mm. I kind of am starting to feel good inside, like you oh, said. Yeah. Mm. Like soulfully good. I got quite excited about raw food because on first inspection and first bite, yummy. But then about half an hour later, I felt really, really sick. I'm not sure why. I think it might have been all the enzymes and electrolytes going into my body, man. It kind of made me too pure. And, um, yeah, I felt right gippy. So I had to go and drink a dark Coke instead. What I should have done was call Jackie my food coach. She might have talked me out of it. Hi, Anna. How are you? I'm having a crisis. I'm standing outside a muffin stall. I need to eat one. I don't know what to do. Don't turn the control of your life over to a muffin. 
It's about six or seven hundred calories. It's loaded with fat and sugar. It has no redeeming nutritional value. Forget about it and take yourself away from me. Okay, I'll stay strong. Bye. Bye. Well, I have, on your behalf, dear viewer, been on a roller coaster ride investigating all the crazy fad diets that are out there. But actually, I've shifted a stone and a half by the end of all of this. Some things work, some things are insane. Five bags of apples coming up. Week one was the apple diet for me, which was a bit of a shock introduction into the world of crazy diets. I was beside myself with hunger and just generally being a right grouchy old cow. And at the end of it, I lost a pound. My natural tummy tuck massage. I've got to tell you, it worked. I have just done the biggest poo known to mankind. Gillian McKeith would be proud of me. Tell you what, I lost inches off my waist and my hips. The surgery, the smart lipo, I've heard from many, many people it's a really good quick fix solution, but for me, it went wrong. Bad arm, good arm, fat arm, thin arm. Baby food week. I honestly thought, brilliant, I'm going to be dead thin by the end of the week. It was like eating pots of pureed snot. I really wasn't looking forward to doing the diet pill week. And I tell you what, I think I lost at the end of it about a pound or two. What's the point? The maple syrup diet. Essentially, you're fasting. All you're taking in is water and sugar, and it absolutely is not a good idea. I hated it. Clean, deep, that's perfect. The one diet that worked for me was hypnosis because it addresses the psychological relationship that you yourself have with food, and it really weirdly, naturally, made me want to make healthy food choices. And at the end of my hypnosis week, I lost three pounds, which was more than any other diet that I tried. Do you know what I've learned on this series? There is no secret to weight loss. You just eat a little bit less, and you move a little bit more. It's literally that simple. Good luck. Before we see how Tatiana and Sandra look today, here's how they got on after three months on their eating plans. They've come back to the clinic for their first weigh-in with Dr. Christian. When we first met you, you were six stone, nine pounds. And you'd never been above seven stone in your life, had you? No. You're now seven stone one. She's also put on two inches round her waist and thigh. And thanks to a six pound weight gain, she even has a cleavage for the first time in her life. Tat has tackled the new eating plan and reaped the benefits, but has Sandra managed to do the same? When we first met you, Sandra, you were 23 stone four pounds. Now, you're 22 stone four. Whoa! <laughs> You've lost a whole stone. Oh my God. What do you think? Well, I'll be in my bikini next year, that's what I think. <laughs> She's also lost five inches from her waist and six and a half inches from each thigh. The first swap is a resounding success, but have Yasmin and Daryl done as well on their three-month diet plans? They've also returned to the clinic to find out. Yasmin has managed to gain half a stone in just three months and put on four inches. Have I in really? Fact, just over four inches around your tummy, which is more than I thought you ever would. I, I didn't even think I'd put on... Four inches around your tummy and I your really, hips. really didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but has Yasmin's opposite, Daryl, managed to shift any weight on his diet plan? But you have managed to lose four stone three pounds. No way! That's well, more than I thought. Well done, yeah. Yeah. As well. well done. Are you pleased with that? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's more than my son weighed. Daryl's also lost an impressive seven inches from his waist. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> I really, I'm so that's happy. That's cool. That's great. And you're going to keep it up? Yes. Coming up, we bring back Tatiana and Sandra and Yasmin and Daryl for their final weigh-ins. One year on, they're back to celebrate their success and to prove that size definitely matters. Me old jeans, I mean, me and the wife can fit them together.
A year ago, we met Tatiana, Sandra, Yasmin and Daryl. Their five-day diet swaps taught them some hard lessons in healthy eating. Three months later, after following their healthy eating plans, we saw the super skinnies pile on the pounds and the supersized shed the stones. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> I really am so happy. That's cool. It was a step in the right direction, so now, after a year on their plans, they've returned to the clinic for a final check-up with Dr Christian. It'll be great to see these two swaps again after such a long time because a lot can happen in a year, and I'm really hoping to see some positive changes in everybody. First up is Tatiana. A year ago, she weighed in at six stone nine pounds and was eating the equivalent daily diet of a four-year-old. Three months later, she gained six pounds, taking her over seven stone for the first time in her life. But a year down the line, has she kept it up? I feel a bit nervous being back because um, I may have put on a little bit more weight, but I'm not entirely sure. It seems to go up and down. I have been trying. It just doesn't seem to stay on me very well. <laughs> Supersized Sandra Andrew lost a stone after her 12-week diet regime, but has she managed to put a stop to her snacking and keep the weight off? Um, it's not been easy. You know, I've had some you know, drastic changes, but I feel much, much better. Tatiana and Sandra had some tough lessons during the swap. Tatiana had to learn to enjoy food and to eat regularly, and Sandra had to control her portion sizes and eat at the right times. I really hope that they've both been able to master these. It's now time to reunite Super Size and Super Skinny. Hello. <laughs> I think you both look spectacular. Sandra, how's it been? Mm. OK. Yeah. A struggle. And what about you, Tatiana? Have you been trying? <laughs> yes, definitely. Am I going to be happy? I hope so. <laughs> wow. I'm going to put you out of your misery straight away. Do you remember what you weighed when we first met? You were six stone nine pounds. Mm -hmm. And on your first visit back, you put on six pounds. You put on another two pounds. Oh, really? Yes, you have. You have. So I'm delighted. So you were listening to me. You've done everything that I've said. I feel better because I was a bit worried that I hadn't put anything on or kept it the same. So No, you I'm absolutely happy. have. So, Sandra, well, let me tell you, when we first met, you were 23 stone four. And when you came back after three months, you'd lost a stone. Mm -hmm. Well, now... You are 18 stone nine. No way! You, no. Are, you are! You've lost four stone six pounds. Yeah. You happy? Yeah, I'm shocked, actually. Good, that's what we like. Yeah. She's also lost a whopping ten inches from her waist, which has transformed her from frumpy to fabulous. Tell me what you're doing differently now. Well, there's a number of things, really. First of all, you know, I had to take some drastic action. I do still eat lots of times, but I can eat just lots of little bits at times, and then when it comes towards the evening, I can just have, you know, instead of like a fish finger sandwich. I remember them. <laughs> Do you remember them? <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember I sometimes them. still have my fish fingers, but just not with the bread, because by the time you've had the fish fingers, you feel fine. Tatiana, what have you had to change? Now I, def I try and get breakfast in, because before I wasn't eating breakfast, or I would just have a cereal bar, whereas now I would have something bigger, like a bowl of porridge and some fruit or something. Mm. And um, I have snacks throughout the day as well, whereas before I was just having, like, two meals a day. So mm. I just have a lot more energy. And have you started doing a little exercise as well? I walk more. And I do a bit of my dancing, of course. Yeah. Will you do some for us? <laughs> OK. Go on, then. <laughs> She's good. <laughs> We're liking the hips. You know, get, get the waist moving, you know. <laughs> You've got a waist now as well. Tatiana and Sandra have adopted a new healthy lifestyle and are enjoying the benefits. Let's hope the second swap will be as successful. A year ago, super skinny Yasmin Smith weighed in at 7 stone 11 pounds. Her wheat-free, preservative-free and lactose-free diet was starving her body of vital nutrients. She followed a healthy eating plan for 12 weeks and piled on 8 pounds. Gosh, look at you. That is such a difference. One year on, how's she doing? She's come back to the clinic to find out. 
The past year has been quite tough, especially the first six months, trying to relearn how to incorporate um, foods into my diet. A year ago, Daryl tipped the scales at 33 stone and was heading for an early grave. Following a 12-week eating plan, he shifted an incredible four stone. That's more than my son weighed. One year on, has he managed to keep up the momentum? We're about to find out. It's very strange to be back here. I mean, this last year has been up and down at times. You know, it's, nothing's never easy. OK, so, Daryl, moment of truth. It's time for Super Size to be reunited with Super Skinny. You think she's looking better? Yeah, she looks good. Yeah? Yeah, you've lost loads of weight and your shirt's like yeah. hanging off you. And you're not shivering with cold, And I'm not cold, no. You're not cold. Well, are you itching to know your results? Yeah. Yeah? Definitely. When I first saw you, you were 7 stone 11. You yeah. were in an unhealthy body weight. You've managed to put that to a healthier level, OK? 8 stone 5 and kept it through the whole year. You've lost nothing. So I am delighted. So it is working. And you look, doesn't she, so much better for it. I'm really pleased about Yasmin's progress because she's had a difficult year, but she's now so much more relaxed about what she's eating and she doesn't let food control her anymore. Daryl, when I met you, you were what? 33 stone one. 33. You're never going to forget that figure. No. You were 33 stone one. You're now at 24 stone. So you have lost nine stone. It's phenomenal. It's He's also lost a staggering 13 inches round his waist, and after losing over a quarter of his body weight, he's a shadow of his former self. My old jeans, I mean, me and the wife can fit them together. I'm not going to go back to my old diet, you know, because I know what it felt like to be that weight, and I don't want that again. I'm really proud of myself. It's been a hard year, but um, I'm glad I've kept going. One of the nicest things about losing weight is looking and feeling better in my clothes. And like, you know the ones that you buy that, you know, you hope to get into? Suddenly you can fit into them. <laughs> they've all done really well and achieved more than they thought possible. But now they've got to keep going. This isn't a quick fix diet. This is a lifelong plan. But at least now they're all heading in the right direction. Learn more about a happy and healthy attitude to weight with the Super Size vs Super Skinny Take Control of Your Weight book. Available to buy now at channel4.com slash shop. Tomorrow night at 8, Kirsty catches up with a mother-daughter duo one year on from their relocation, relocation. Next on tonight's menu, calves brain custard, anyone? Uh, an acquired taste, perhaps, in Heston's Roman Feast.